Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I'm planning to go to the segmented uh, symposium this fall in Chicago, and I reviewed the agenda and I saw something that I, I didn't know what to think about it really. It was a presentation where someone is going to turn a bull from OSB. Now, OSB to me is fairly nasty stuff that uses siding and roofing, and to me a bull where you're seeing the end grain of OSB to me would not be very exciting. I don't know what he's going to do, but I have had experience where I've turned material on its side and I get a very interesting figure out of that. So I'm going to attempt a an OSB bowl and see how it goes. And then maybe I can compare notes. So here we go. Let's turn this bowl out of OSB and cherry. I found an off cut of half inch thick OSB in my sheet stockpile. OSB is pretty ugly straight from the store. One side is almost smooth, the other quite rough. Both sides have black markings. I ripped it into two and a half inch wide strips, but it is still pretty ugly. The drum sander did a good job of cleaning up both sides. The flakes become interesting. Then a lot of glue and a lot of clamps in my glue board. OSB does not cut to a clean edge. I found it necessary to separate each layer of OSB with a layer of solid wood. I checked my stock of thin rings cut off from other projects. I found enough with sizes close enough to use on this project. I laid them out on a board with double stick tape to go through the drum sander. On their own, the sander would chew up the smaller rings. This yielded a nice stack of cherry rings, 12 segments each. Meanwhile, the glue is dry on the OSB strips. I ripped the doubled strips in half again. Then I cut and assembled my OSB segment rings. Please see my earlier video on how I glue rings. The critical difference is to rotate each strip so the flakes are vertical or flat to the outside. The first layer has a disc of OSB glued on into the base. Since the OSB is already a manufactured product, I do not worry to worry about shrinkage. The first layer is glued to a threaded waste block with a thin cherry layer glued to the top side. Rather than glue each ring on one at a time, I pulled out more faceplates and prepped the remaining tier rings into tiers of OSB and cherry. Double stick tape will be sufficient here. This will enable me to trim the project layer by layer, especially the interior, as you will see later. Otherwise, this would turn into a deep Halloween project and I do not relish that prospect, especially with OSB. At this point, the first two sets of OSB blocks on their faceplate are mounted to the spindle. The third set is on a threaded revolving live center. I have pressed them together with pressure only, no glue. This way I can assess the flow of the line across both sets. I can also take it apart to make sure the wall is still thick enough. With the exterior of the left set established, I can fine-tune the interior with my box scraper. I also sanded the interior since I may never be able to reach it again, then glued these two sets together. I also applied some water-based sanding sealer with the hope that it might hold the OSB flakes together better. Now for the next layer. Again, the two tiers are pressed together the same way. I'm trying every trick I know to take light cuts and avoid the OSB flakes chipping off. Shear cutting, light push cuts, anything I can think of. It is really nice to be able to split the sections apart to assess thickness and progress. One problem, as the flare increases out from the vertical, the OSB is tending to chip off even worse. I have to be more careful. I could use some CA, but I would need a lot of it. Now for the interior, again with the box scraper. I have to pay close attention to the previous joint one tier back to smooth it out without blowing up my vase. 
Again, sand the interior and apply sanding sealer to the exterior. This time the next tier is the top cherry tier. This was the single ring that I split in half and glued back together again, but brick laid for strength. I am not sure I completely trust the OSB for strength and wanted a good solid ring for the top to hold it all together. There is even more chip out at the top of the last OSB. Hopefully the glue from the next ring will help hold it from chipping. Again, clean up the interior, especially the previous joint. Then sand it again and glue on the final cherry ring set. Again, the sanding sealer. This time I tried a freshly sharpened round nose scraper to try to remove more chips than I create. I am not sure of my success. At least it is still holding together. Then I push back the top support and address the cherry which is now becoming the lip of the vase. Starting with a box scraper helps keep the pressure in line with the turning axis. I almost mounted my steady rest. I finished with a spindle gouge. All this is followed by a thorough sanding. I started with 60 grit on the OSB to try to smooth it out without creating chips. I also reversed the lathe with each grit since the wood has flake edges that need sanding from both directions. After dusting off the vase, I spray it with rattle can lacquer. I chose this lacquer for gloss, which seems appropriate for this vase with its bumpy texture. With other finishes, I feared that buffing would result in compound and or threads becoming embedded. Lacquer is glossy on its own. This will be fine. All that is left to part it off without disaster. Now, to again tempt fate, I need to part off the vase without it becoming a UFO. A threaded faceplate with a tall center dowel is on the live center. A paper towel slips over the dowel to provide some protection. Then, ever so gently, part the vase from the faceplate. I tried to stay well on the side of the faceplate. Finally, sand and sign the base of the vase before applying some more lacquer. Now that we've turned it, yes, I think I succeeded. Uh, there were a lot of problems with the chip, the... Uh, OSB flaking off and such. Uh, I don't know how the presenter is going to do it, but at least I'm going to be prepared to ask a lot of very good questions now that I've attempted it. But meanwhile, I kind of like it. Not sure I'll do too many more of them, but we'll see.